What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Master's Degree Podcast right here on the No Holds Barred Network, your source for all wrestling podcast content and more. I'm your host of the Master's Degree Podcast, as always, Kyle Masters. I am your owner and CEO of the network as well. And here, guys, welcome to episode number four of this brand new podcast. It's a solo podcast I'm venturing on on the network, giving you guys um, basically my opinions and my thoughts on trending things going on in the wrestling world today, whether it be in the WWE, whether it be in AEW slightly, because uh, I do run the All Elite podcast with my co-host Tiff, so I'm not going to touch too much on AEW, uh, more of what else is going on in the uh, wrestling world. And uh, Sometimes ROH, sometimes Impact, whatever is trending, I kind of give you my two cents on what I know about it and what are my thoughts and stuff? And uh, I want to hear from you guys, too. If you guys like what I do here, leave me know down in the comments below on YouTube or if you're listening on the go. Make sure you're following me at Real Kyle Masters, all one word, and tweet me using the hashtag Masters Degree. Um, tell you a little bit of a shortest, short episode, I guess. Uh, the main topic, as you guys can see in the thumbnail, dumb by my boy Salrax. Shoutouts to him each and every single week. He makes my thumbnails for this podcast. Shoutouts to him, guys. Go hit him up if you need some graphic work. Guy is literally, truly on another level when it comes to graphic work in the IWC. Guy is amazing. So thank you each and every single week. Sal, actually, you know you're my boy when it comes to this stuff. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, as you can see in the thumbnail, the beautifully one done by him. Um, Two-day WrestleMania. It's been a main topic i think over the last couple of years when it comes down to wrestlemania season because it's so 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 damn long and i know you guys feel me in that one too every time the last couple of years with wrestlemania it just feels like it's way too long it feels like it it literally is is almost half a day and then by the time you get to the end of it you're just so fatigued like how can you even get into a main event when like you sat there even the people in the building that's what i feel for um because i the last wrestlemania i attended was wrestlemania 34 um, it was long, but, um, I mean, <laughs> it did help that I had a couple of wobbly pops in me, but, um, it was long, like, and you know what I mean? Like, it's, I feel like they can do a two day thing, which we're getting into in a bit here. And like I said, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's way too long. I watched 35 the year after while I was in New York with Tiff. And again, it's just way too long and you're fatigued by the end of it. And I feel that they could really do great things with a two-day one we've seen how multiple day big events work especially from new japan pro wrestling uh they got it down to a science over there with wrestle kingdom and it works for them so um i think there's definitely a lot more pros than there is cons when doing a a two-day wrestlemania which we'll get into right now i guess we'll just jump into it um i do agree they should do a two-day wrestlemania it would be amazing um, Saturday, Sunday kind of combo, and you can fit a lot of things in it. You know, one night could be um, like your your mid card titles. I don't know if you're gonna want to split the main championships. I'm in favor of splitting the main championships. I think maybe like uh, the more prestigious one, which in my eyes is the WWE Championship, that should be defended on night two, so the Sunday night, and the Universal Championship should be defended on the Saturday. So you kind of split them up. So there's there's <laughs> you know there's Epic things happening in both nights for you to attend. It's not like you're just going to get tickets to go to a WrestleMania weekend. It's like, yeah, I may attend the Saturday, but I'm for sure going to go to Sunday. No, you, you, they have enough uh, talent championships to make both nights actually mean something and for you want to attend both. And you don't have to make both long. I think you can either do like a three-hour one or a two-hour one on the Saturday. Maybe because it's WrestleMania three to four hour on The Saturday, which I would say Saturday three hour tops, and then four hours for the Sunday being the last day, and then you can there you go. You combine both. You combine one whole giant pack day, including pre show, into two days. Uh, You make a big weekend out of it for people. I think they could do wonders with that. It it shouldn't be that hard to do, especially with a company like WWE. You're the ultimate company out there. You have the money. You're backed by a multi billion dollar man. It it, it's doable. It's it's more doable than I think people are talking and and they they think that WWE can or cannot do. Um, I'm sure it's not a problem renting a stadium for two days. I mean, you would have to maybe rent an extra day for setup. I think because I think they do start setting up like a week before and then they they, they build the stage and everything and it, it takes them a week. You might have to take an extra day, um, but I would sacrifice I, – I mean I love the stage setups. I know like a lot of people out there, like they expect WrestleMania to have like big 
huge, giant, crazy looking stages. I mean, they can, they can, or if they want to kind of condense that just a little bit, just to get enough time to build a certain stage for both nights. I think that I think we can sacrifice a little bit of stage development for having a two night WrestleMania in a card where you're not going to fall asleep by the end of it. Um, I think you can do great things with two nights. Um, obviously the Hall of Fame. Uh, would be the Friday night if we're going to do something like that, which is fine. I mean, Friday night's usually the big, the first weekend night of the whole weekend. You can do the Hall of Fame that night. As for TakeOver, that's a toughie for me. Um, what I would do is I would scrap the whole WrestleMania TakeOver for that weekend. Um, the NXT star, since now NXT is being considered a third brand, I think you can scrap the NXT TakeOver for that weekend and just have the NXT stars have matches on WrestleMania's card. WrestleMania be part of the NXT pay-per-view lineup, and they can build towards WrestleMania. You can ha- you have people in NXT UK you can include, and the regular unit, the regular NXT here in North America. So it's doable, and you have two nights. You can fit everybody in. You know, I think they can do a really good job with having a two-night WrestleMania. I think it's a great idea. I hope they're thinking about it. I hope um, it's something they've talked about. I think the one thing that's going to stop them from doing that is it's ultimately the ultimate boss, and there's probably a lot of people who don't like the two-day WrestleMania thing who kind of have a, a say in this back there in this in, in this decision-making, and, um, you know, they probably want to maybe... They're, they're thinking, I'm assuming, that they're thinking that WrestleMania should just be one day. That's what made it special. It's a one-day thing. We don't want to be like other companies, but because you're such a big company, that's the problem. You're such a huge company... And, you know, you want to be about pleasing the fans and, and keep keeping viewers on WrestleMania. I think you can get a lot more viewers with spreading it to a two-day WrestleMania. I think you get more people enjoying the product rather than sitting there. Can you imagine being going to a WrestleMania now but with the schedules that they are like? You get there, the pre-show starting like 4.30 or like 4 p.m. now. <laughs> Like when these pre-shows start and the first match comes out in the pre-show, there's like barely anybody in the stadium. Like... <laughs> Presentation-wise, it just looks horrible, and I feel bad for the uh, people who get that that slot, the the pre-show slot, and have to go out there. And you know, their their dream is to wrestle WrestleMania, but with like more people and with screaming fans, and to, to hear the, the the roar of sixty thousand screaming fans screaming for them, that kind of sucks. So. I think they can do away with that. I mean, you, you imagine, you imagine you going to this, and you, you got yourself in the stadium, and it's four, you know, it's four p.m. Eastern time or whatever time it is when you're when this event is starting at, and you sit there and you watch the pre-show. And by the time the whole pre-show is done, that's like a three-hour pre-show. That's like <laughs> from four to seven. Seven o'clock is when WrestleMania usually starts. So four to seven, the pre-show. That's three hours. That's already the length of a regular pay-per-view, right? And the card hasn't even started yet. Then you got to get into the whole anthem and the the God Bless America and, and, and the opening act, whatever that is, and um, the opening match and everything. Like, and then you're going from 7 to usually to 11 p.m. even further, 12 p.m. sometimes. The last couple of WrestleMania, there's a lot that's been closer to, to midnight. So that's a long time. And sitting there in that same spot for that long is very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable on the body. And this is where the fatigue comes in. Like, you're cheering for so many damn things. And it does suck. As a fan, from the fan's perspective, it does suck to be there for that long. So if they can split it into two days, you go home, you you know, you go to the first night. It's only a three-hour WrestleMania. It's exciting. You're, you're excited. You're After the end of it, you're just... You're so pumped up. You go home, you get a really good night or the hotel or you go out partying after and then you have all day rest the next day to start until the next WrestleMania. So I think it's it could benefit as a fan for sure. It can also benefit from the wrestler's perspective as well. A lot of if you shove everything into one night like it has been for the last couple of years, I think some of the wrestlers, they're, the moments are being lost because everything's shoved into one night. So something happens like crazy in the beginning of the night, and then more stuff happens throughout the night, and then uh, by the end of the night, there's something even crazier that happens. That one first moment often gets forgotten about. If you're splitting it into two nights, you're getting significant moments happening on each night, and it's something fans will remember, and people will remember after. Like weeks ha- weeks go by after, and people are like, oh yeah, I remember that when that happened. That was on the first night of WrestleMania, and... Uh, the other night, you know that this would happen. You know, it, it's it's easier to di- differentiate and it's easier to remember than to forget. So, I think really there are more positives 
to having a two-night WrestleMania than there is having a single night. I think it will work out, again, for the fans and for the wrestlers themselves. Let me know what you guys think out there, or what you guys think we would do, or how if it would be a good idea for a two-night WrestleMania. I want to know what you guys think. Is it feasible? Can the WWE do it? Um, do you think they, they care too much about, uh, I guess what you can say, not value, but do they care more about nostalgia and having it just a one night and that is going to be the determining factor in deciding whether to have a two night or one night WrestleMania? Let me know out there, guys. You can tweet at me at Real Kyle Masters, or if you're listening to this on YouTube, drop a comment down below. So we're going to move on here. And, uh, the other thing I want to move on to is this is interesting. Um, so kind of has to do with WrestleMania in a way because WWE has their WrestleManias, right? Like they have their their regular show of shows, but for the last couple of years, it's almost like they've been having two WrestleManias, not like two night WrestleManias. No, they've been having another event later on that they build up as like the second WrestleMania, and I absolutely hate this. I hate how they build. I don't care if they would have the event in this place. That it, that's that's another topic for another day, but to label it as a second WrestleMania is almost like an insult. So that's why I don't think they should care enough to have a two-night WrestleMania if you're going to do this anyways. And that's the Saudi shows. Um, so many mixed opinions on the Saudi Arabia shows. Um, I'm literally, and you guys can argue with me if you want, I'm on the side where I don't think they should be going over there. After what we got from the last one with the rumors of the, the whole playing situation and stuff, it doesn't look like it's safe for the superstars. And a lot of people don't even want to, a lot of superstars are, are, are not even going. So, um... I have this article here. It's from the Inquisitor, and they said the date of the next Saudi Arabia show event is coming soon. And I'm sitting there going, like, oh, can they? They need to get out of this relationship as soon as possible because I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like it. I really don't like it. And um, there's been no official mention yet of the next event will being held, but there are rumors starting to swirl that it's coming very soon, actually. And the speculation is to be believed the next trip in the Saudi Arabia is going to be coming on the road to WrestleMania. I'm like, what? Are they for real? With the, I really hope they're not for real with this. Um, there's only like a little bit, like two months away from like WrestleMania 36. So I don't, I really hope this is not true. But the PW Insider is is is, is saying that the next WWE pay-per-view event in Saudi Arabia is going to take place on Thursday, February 20th. An official announcement from the company is expected soon and there's no official name or card for it. Are you serious? February 20th, February 20th. So you're looking at a month from now. This can't be right. How are you going to have another Saudi show? Which you're going to label the, like the next wrestler. Like this is going to probably be labeled as the oh the pre WrestleMania before the actual WrestleMania. Like I hate this. I hate when they go over there. The matches mean nothing. They don't tie in any storyline. It's just it's I so complete waste of time. I don't understand. They have an extension with them. The deal will continue through 2027. Like, oh, and it's that dirty Saudi money. Like, I know it's a lot of money, but come on. Now that now they're just basically showing you they're selling out just for the money. Like, I don't understand this. I really don't. It, it's a, literally a waste of time. It has nothing to do with storylines. They don't include storylines from Saudi Arabia into the real storylines. And if they do, it's it's just horrible. I don't understand why they're doing this. It's not good. Like, I really don't think this is a good idea. So, I think it's just cut ties with the Saudi Arabia thing. It's just not great. And it just, you know, you have when you have superstars that are afraid to go over there, that's really bad look in the locker room. And it's bad for locker room morale. And it's, it's, it's basically watering down WrestleMania 36. If they're going to label it, and that's only if. If they're going to label it as the pre-WrestleMania, before WrestleMania, then you're in trouble. Then you should... <laughs> You should just cross WrestleMania 36 off your list because you're just watered it down huge because you're going to obviously do something at this event that's going to affect WrestleMania. And you have superstars on the roster, and main, a lot of like main superstars on your roster that you are pushing right now that do not want to go over there because they feel unsafe. And look what happened the last time with... I don't know what rumor was true, what was not true, what, what happened on the plane and, and the runway and the prince. Like, why go through that every single time you're going to go over there? Because clearly, from that last event, this isn't the first. This isn't going to be the last time. That's that's. It's just not safe. It's not safe. I don't understand why they keep going through with this. Obviously, we know it's the money, but it's horrible. It's a it's a horrible idea. Let me know what you guys think about this whole side of your thing. You should should they cut ties or should they continue because business is business? 
let me know. All right, so continuing on the WWE side, um, let's talk about the revival. They're almost certainly going to be going to AEW. It's it's only a matter of time when their contract expires that they'll be making their full debut in, in All Elite Wrestling. It's going to happen, guys, and there's been some clues that have been let out about you know their future and them, them sneakily making these uh, little leaks. Um, so I guess... I, I, uh, Another hint linking the revival to the all elite rest to all elite wrestling uh, emerged recently with uh, uh, the Lords of Pain noting that Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson are currently working with Michael Dawkins of Shoemaker and Loop and Kendrick, a group of lawyers based out of Toledo, Ohio. So they these are actual lawyers here that they're working with, and the reason this is notable is because. Um, it is the same attorney that Cody Rose recently used to to use to assist filing to trademark the American Nightmare and the American Dream and a bunch of other trademarks. In addition to this, Art Anderson used the same one for his ring name, and Jim Ross had him file the Voice of Wrestling. And the lawyers also worked with AEW's adjacent Conrad Thompson to secure Four Horse Horsemen last month. Um, it was also noted, along with everything else linking the revival to AEW, it is speculative. There's a strong chance that they're gone with Dawkins because of uh, his experience in working with wrestlers. Regardless that they they are now working alongside somebody in AEW have used in just a few months before their current WWE contracts expire is interesting. So they're using the same lawyers to get some um, trademarks done, and uh, the trademarks were for their finishing move. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my God. That's a bad one. <laughs> Sorry, you guys had to hear that. I can't even edit that out. I'm not going to edit it out. <laughs> um, they're trademarking their finishing move, the Shatter Machine. Um, so they went to register uh, that name. Um, then they used their real names, actually, for trademarking that. So that's also interesting as well. Um, and then they also registered uh, hashtag FTRKO. <laughs> that's also interesting. Um, so they got our, their contracts expiring soon. Um, they're using the same trademark people as AEW are using, uh, in Ohio there. So, and then they keep tweeting like you, you there's, there's times where they, they'll like and tweet stuff at each other. It's, they're going to go to AEW. They're not happy clearly in the WWE. WWE is going to bury them until they, they, they leave the company. It's going to happen. We've seen it recently and we know that it's almost imminent that they're going to be going to AEW, and that's fine. That's great. Like it <laughs> clearly, WWE has nothing for them. They don't want to stay over there. They clearly want to work with their friends who are working in AEW, and they see AEW as a chance to uh, go farther as a tag team and another step in their career. So that's fine. I don't, I don't understand how there's so much bitterness when WWE has so much talent. That because one team wants to leave, they they do they they're so bitter about it and they're so petty that they have to bury these guys on their way out because they know that they're going to AEW. Who to WWE that's competition, but to AEW that's you know they're just trying to be the alternative. So and I and I think to AEW it's besides you know AEW having their friends there and everything. I think because AEW focuses more on tag team wrestling and Dash and Dawson are tag team wrestlers, they think they can. De- uh, be themselves and be the tag team they want to be with AEW rather than uh, WWE, which creative freedom in WWE we all know is very, very, <laughs> very non-existent in a lot of people and it probably is with the revival. So I'm sure that WWE is going to be throwing all kinds of money and any kind of money at them before they leave. And I'm sure Dash and Dawson will probably get tempted. They're normal. They're human beings just like us. You, you know, you're always tempted at more money, but I think at the end of the day, they're going to choose AEW and um, they're going to be going to where they want to go and wrestle for the rest of their careers, maybe, or just for this point in their careers as well. So I'm all for the revival coming over. They can do a lot of stuff. Um, we've seen that in the past with uh, being the elite, and I think they can be a really good, successful tag team in AEW. So. All but going to be confirmed when they come over. I cannot wait for this to happen. It'll be in the next couple of months with their contracts expiring soon. So, let's move on now. And <laughs> I wanted to talk about this, but I don't know the whole story, to be honest, guys. I haven't really been paying attention too much. I had like stuff to talk about with Tessa Blanchard, and I don't want to go too deep into that because there's a lot of stuff on there that's really iffy to talk about. Um, 
I think the one thing we can talk about with Tessa Blanchard without stepping on any toes or going too much into it is this uh, this decision to make her the world champion in Impact Wrestling. So she is the Impact Wrestling world champion. This is the first time ever a woman is becoming a main champion in a company, as in the, the main world championship. So at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view, uh, she won... And it was surrounded by controversy uh, with what her allegations of, 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 bull, of you know being bullied and bullying people and using racist language. Um, you know, it, it, people were criticizing amid, amidst all that people were criticizing her winning the championship as a woman winning the main championship. And one person that didn't like it was Booker T uh, from what I'm reading. Uh, he explained on his podcast that he has the respect for Blanchard winning a previously male only title because she's a talented wrestler and she's really good at what she does. He says, however, he wants to, he, he went on to stress that he feels giving her the impact world championship is the worst idea in that promotion's entire history, as it has the potential of making male wrestlers look and feel inferior in the ring. Uh, He says, because now all the men in the company, if they wrestle her and she beats them and diminishes every guy in the company, I mean, who's the top guy in the company now? Booker T quoted as saying. He does have a point there. I mean, I can see where he's coming from. Like, you have, like, uh, you have, like, everyone there now that's that wants to become the main champion. And whoever she beats, you know, it's like you just lost to, a, like, a woman who won the world championship. But I don't think they should really look at it as being diminishing. I mean, it should show that... You know, Tessa is that strong, and Tessa is that big to have won the world championship as a woman. And I think we kind of need to get out of that mentality of of people who think like that. Um, Another way of what Booker is trying to say is like a company what in the state that they're in for her to win the world title is isn't really that big. Um, If she had won that in a mainstream company, a bigger mainstream company like a New Japan or. Uh, a WWE or an NXT or an NXT UK or an AEW, I think it would have been a bigger story. But the fact that she's done it with it with Impact, I know there's Impact Wrestling fans out there. I'm not shitting on your company. I'm just saying Impact is not as strong as those companies. So in a way, it's not like it's that much of a big deal. It is a big deal, but in reality, it's just like, ah, okay, like she won a main title for a, a, a sort of big company, not that big. So it's not... It doesn't feel like it should be a big deal than it than it is. Like it, it should feel like a bigger deal. And, and if you guys get what I'm trying to say, that's the only problem I have with her winning that world championship. Other than that, good for her. She definitely deserves it. I think she's a great wrestler. Um, and I, you know, I'm I'm happy for her to win that championship. So I just feel like it sh- it should be bigger, but it can't because of the company that she's in. And it's sad. Like I wish Impact was bigger than it was, but it, unfortunately, it isn't. So that's all I'm going to say about that in Tessa Blanchard. So another thing that's been talked about recently in the rest, like going on in the wrestling world is from what I seen, I seen this the other day and I'm like, this can't be real, but apparently he does. So not only does David Benoit, Chris Benoit's son want to get his dad into the hall of fame, which I understand from where he's coming from with that. That's not what I'm talking about. The other thing I've seen was that David Benoit, you know, he's trained to be a wrestler. He wants to follow in his dad's footsteps. That's understandable. But he wants to wrestle under the name Chris Benoit Jr. And he wants to use his theme song, the Our Lady Peace theme song, which I love. I loved Chris Benoit's theme song done by Our Lady Peace. That was my favorite. I love it. Love it. Such a good, it's a banger. But to <laughs> to wrestle under Chris Benoit Jr. and use that theme song, like I'm sitting there going, I'm just picturing him coming out dressed like his dad. I'm sitting there, that is a bad idea, man. Do not go in that direction. I really hope he he rethinks that and, and takes two seconds to think about that. That is a horrible idea because you know what you're going to hear out there when you come out as that, uh, Dave. You're not going to hear the, the loud pop that you're going to want to hear. You're simply going to hear. Yeah, and it's not going to be nice. It's going to be it's going to be go it's going to go bad. People are going to be awkward about it. Just wrestle as Dave Benoit. You don't or another alias. You don't need to come out as your dad with the junior. That's just I know you want to you live up to your dad's footsteps and wrestling and all that, but just stay away from that, please, and leave the Our Lady Peace track alone. 
Actually, you know, I don't even know if I'm that mad about that. I'm just mad about the name. The Chris Benoit Jr., do not. Please do not go in that direction, man. That's... <laughs> No, putting your dad in the Hall of Fame is another thing. Like I, I kind of agree with him. Chris Benoit has done a lot for this this company and, and wrestling in general, and I do believe one day he should be in the Hall of Fame. Maybe not this year, but in the future, I think Chris Benoit does deserve a spot in the WWE Hall of Fame. And then, but that's putting aside all the what's happened with him in his life and his death. Like wrestling wise, he deserves to be in there. So let's just kind of move on. <laughs> let's kind of move on from that. And before we move out from WWE, the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is since it's you know WrestleMania season, we got to talk about it. I'm talking about it. it happens every single WrestleMania season, and it's it it's been, it's about the Undertaker. Let's let's start out with that. It's about the Undertaker, guys. Undertaker is my favorite of all time. He's my number one. He was the reason why I got into started watching wrestling when I first started watching wrestling way back, and this was like 2001, 2002. Uh, the Undertaker was my favorite. He's the first guy I've seen and I laid eyes on when I watched a wrestling match. And it was just, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was he's became my favorite. He was awesome. He was what I fell in love with, 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 with professional wrestling. So, um, recently PW Insider reports that Undertaker is at the performance center today or the, the other day. Uh, he was actually watching NXT television show from last night with the roster and giving some advice to them. Um, I don't think he's training there was no uh there was not nothing of him training at the performance center it was just giving people advice and watching nxt he wasn't there doing anything uh physical wise uh, i just uh, i enjoy him being a coach and doing that stuff but wrestling guys we gotta cut it out with him every single wrestlemania season oh who's undertaker gonna face oh he should have a wrestlemania match oh it's gonna be great and no no, no, we don't. We do not have to have the Undertaker come out at all. He's done. Had two hip surgeries. Let's cut it. Let's give it a rest. Undertaker's going to be in the Hall of Fame eventually. Let's just... I don't think he, he should be wrestling anybody. Rather, regardless of what his fitness level is now and how good he feels, I just, I'm just done. Like, it, his matches aren't going to mean anything. We've seen the last couple of Undertaker matches have been horrendous and very quick. Do we really need to see the Undertaker at WrestleMania? We do not. Him coming back as a coach, great. Teach the kids. Give them your knowledge of the business. Tell them what to do. Tell them what not to do. What to look for. What not look to, to look for. Do not come back in any match capacity because this is coming from a big Undertaker fan. I do not want to see you in the ring anymore. Plain and simple. Let me know what you guys think. Is it great to have Undertaker back for one last nostalgic match? And who do, who do you think you should face? And I'm sure 90% of you are going to say Sting, but uh, let me know what you guys think out there. So lastly, guys, I just want to talk about one last thing, and it has to do with, I guess you can say Ring of Honor and ties in the AW just a little bit. And that's Marty Skrull. Um, so we kind of touched base a little bit last time that he was going to be the head booker of Ring of Honor. Some news come out. After, ever since he's become this new role, some more news has come out with Marty Scurll and Ring of Honor. The first one I want to talk about is the big one. That is, um, Marty Scurll is actually AEW's first choice to be the leader of the Dark Order. So, you know, with AEW, this whole exalted one being the new leader of the Dark Order. So, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter reports that AEW's original pegged Scurll as the lead in the Dark Order, and it turns out the villain was to be the Exalted One. Now EW will have to figure out something out since Skrull has decided to stay with Ring of Honor and being the head booker. But, but, and this is a big but, big booty but. Um, there's an update on his uh, Ring of Honor deal. That's the first thing I want to talk about, is the big update with that. And... This kind of ties into what I'm going to talk about after that. So, um, news about his new deal with the, his new contract with Ring of Honor deal is not only the most lucrative one in 20 year history of the promotion, but it's also put Skrull on the ROH creative team. According to the recent update with the Wrestling Observer newsletter, Delirious and Skrull have been sharing booking duties, but Skrull will likely be the lead between the two bookers. Um, the plan right now is for Skrull to determine the direction and for Johnson Delirious to run the television show using Skrull's ideas and adding in details and formatting it to television. Uh, the report would continue to say that Skrull's deal will with ROH allows him to work for other promotions as well, 
with the possible exclusions of WWE and AEW. Though he may have been, though he may be permitted to appear for AEW, that is not yet clear. Uh, Skrull is being advertised for the next set of NWA Power taping scheduled for January 26. Uh, the lyrics is said to be happy about the deal, and it takes a lot of pressure and anxiety away from his role. He has been on the ROH booking team since 2010 and head booker since 2012. Um, so this is interesting. So now that he becomes the head booker, could we be seeing a bridge towards working with AEW? So ROH and AEW working together. That would be interesting. Um, Dave Meltzer explained that Marty Scurll's new position on the booking team, he wants to create a bridge between, he may want to create a bridge between two companies. Um, we'll just have to wait and see if AEW is interested. Uh, quote by Dave Meltzer, his friends with the Young Bucks, he wants to have a working relationship between AEW and Ring of Honor. That's his goal. He's going to attempt to do that. I don't know if that's going to happen, but those guys will certainly listen. I think that's a tough one because I don't know what ROH has for our for AEW unlike New Japan, where you can see what AEW would get from their relationship. I think the only thing that would, you know, to me, and this is me talking now, the only thing that they could benefit from a ROH uh, AEW pay per view, or a, you know, a kind of like a bridge is certain. You would have to have superstars appear on both brands, which in reality doesn't look too good. I think. The only bridge that would happen is if they went ahead with, you know, uh, Marty Skrull being the the leader and the exalted one, but we don't see him on TV as much. He's only doing these skits where he's the exalted one, and then eventually, when you know, they do something else with that. I think I think that that's what I think the bridge may likely be if they want to continue with that, or if AEW goes into a different direction, choosing like a Luke Harper or Matt Hardy or someone out there that's different for the exalted one's role or maybe someone on the current roster. I would love to see a bridge, but I, again, I kind of agree with the end of that. Like does art, does, can AEW benefit anything from ring of honor and more, you know, more, even the same as they could benefit from a new Japan pro wrestling. Obviously there's more benefits with the new Japan pro wrestling promotion. So I think the, like the more likely bridge is going to be new Japan pro wrestling um, if there is some sort of bridge with Ring of Honor, I would only likely to see if it's for Rick Marty Skrull in particular to appear on that program. So it'll be interesting to see what's going on with Marty Skrull and what he wants to take ROH and in which direction. His relationships with other companies. Clearly, he's uh, being allowed to work with other promotions. Clearly, being with NWA Power and him being set for the next set of tapings. So we'll see what happens as the weeks come by. I will keep you guys updated that with that on this podcast. But other than that, guys... That's all I got for today. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for downloading the episode on the go or catching this on YouTube. Um, Let's wrap it up here, guys, for episode number four of the Master's Degree Podcast right here on the No Holds Bar Network. It is your source for wrestling podcast content and more. I'm your host, as always, guys, the owner and the CEO of the No Holds Bar Network, Kyle Masters. I'll see you guys and catch you guys next time. Have a good one.